Hello friends, welcome back. This is part 6 of our series, uh, Kegel housing price prediction uh, problem. And before we continue with our series today, uh, I would like to highlight two things. One, uh, on the part one of this series, I have dropped the column ID. Uh, I think uh, we, sh we can keep that column for the time being because it helps us in doing simple basic uh, count kind of calculations. Uh, that is one thing I wanted to highlight. Second thing that I wanted to highlight is by mistake, I have included the building type uh, in this activity where I was trying to assign numbers uh, to this rating kind of data building type is a column which actually doesn't have rating kind of data it is a, a different categorical data where it is the type of the building that has been mentioned uh, whereas if you remember in the part 5 uh, all this quality uh, condition finish kind of data we have converted so building time is kind of a different uh, categorical data so please uh, you know try to run this again without that building type all right uh, next let's see uh, we can, if we can generate the box plot for each of the categorical features that we have and from that box plot let's see how the means of each of the uh, values or the groups within a feature uh, whether they are same or different let's do that analysis first okay so we are going to use the same set of codes you know just four or five lines of code that we have been using uh, uh, first is the melt method which basically basically tries to unpivot your uh, you know the data frame and create a combination of uh, two columns and try to basically plot kind of a scatter plot uh, sorry uh, a, a distribution kind of plot in in this case excuse me in this case we are going to use a box plot and we are going to run it for all the categorical features that we have let's see uh, what we get after we uh, run this particular piece of code so yes because it is trying to plot that many number of figures uh, so it is going to take a little while uh, before it shows up here okay now the first thing uh, that we notice you know once this box plots are done for each of these uh, values within a feature or within a column uh, you can see here that the first thing that we need to notice is the difference in the means all right um, of this uh, particular so if you see here the difference is uh, n uh, you know a, a bare minimum if you can see here uh, the lines are almost very close to each other so uh, on a high level I can say uh, this feature might not be too much significant so what we are looking for is features with a huge uh, variance so you can see here these two lines yes this could be a considerable or a significant factor in predicting the sale price which is condition 2 uh, let's look into other features where there is a significant uh, difference between this uh, mean of each of these values okay um, let's find a few more uh, other columns where we can see a significant difference uh, yeah you can see a subclass uh, you know we have somewhere around 100,000 for this particular value at 30 and around 250,000 uh, dollars at around 60 that means MS subclass could also be a very significant factor in our case okay uh, miscellaneous feature you can see uh, uh, a huge difference right but then we have to see whether it is a limited data or do we have missing values all those things are still pending for us to you know uh, find and do analysis uh, neighborhood as we know location is very important uh, for the data set uh, for the neighborhood perspective wow it seems that there is a huge difference in the 50% uh, line uh, in all of this case so it definitely you know we know that neighborhood is going to be a significant uh, column or feature uh, in predicting the sale price so now this is what we're doing manually and it could be quite cumbersome and keeping a note of what are the columns um, you know it's uh, going to, going to be helpful in order to predict the sale price so in such cases now we are going to apply the ANOVA method that we have learned in part 3 uh, if you haven't uh, gone through part 3 then I would encourage you to just revise the concept of uh, analysis of variance uh, in the part 3 of our video and you'll get a 
clear picture what we are going to do programmatically because in part 3 we have solved uh, a similar problem by hand by taking a very simple example but now we are going to programmatically run those uh, ANOVA method for each of these features and try to calculate their F statistics and the P value. Uh, in the in the in a while, I will explain what does that statistically means and why it is important to do that kind of uh, operations. All right. So uh, in order to calculate the ANOVA, it's pretty straightforward. Um, we are going to use the uh, SciPy dot stats module, and you know we are going to store our uh, the F value and the P value of each of the features uh, in a in a dictionary, and later on we can use this to you know uh, plot and see uh, which of the features has a uh, p significant p value now let's uh, discuss uh, this p value in particular so in statistics you know uh, p value less than 0 0.05 is considered as significant so what does it mean so it means that if we get a p value which is again dependent on the f statistics if the p value is less than 0 0.05 then what we are going to do is we are going to reject the null hypothesis now the question comes what is the null hypothesis here so here null hypothesis says that all the features that are uh, in the categorical features list uh, it says that uh, they do not have any uh, huge difference uh, in in their imp or importance among each other while contributing the uh, sale price right so what i mean to say that all the features in the categorical list are same to have a very same significance that means none is important than other right uh, so in order to do that if we look at the p value of each of the features right and if we get a 0 0.05 a value less than 0 0.05 we can say that that is not true that means each feature does have some kind of significance towards the sale price and we are going to better reject the null hypothesis hope that is clear now right and if it is greater than uh, if p is greater than 0 0.05 uh, in such cases we will not be able to conclude uh, whether to accept or reject the null hypothesis okay so now that we have stored uh, for each feature in the categorical list we have stored the value of f statistics and the p statistics and what we have done is we have converted that dictionary into a data frame so what we can do is now we can you know, just print out the details of that data frame and we can see uh, that the neighborhood have a p-value of e to the power minus 25 that means it's way 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 smaller than uh, what I would say p value which uh, which have a threshold of 0 0.05 so you can see uh, this is way less than 0 0.05 uh, similarly uh, for the foundation we can see that um, you know it is way less than 0 0.05 garage type way less than 0 0.05 MS surplus way less than 0 0.05 right so what we are going to conclude from this is you can see here these are years old months old street they're greater than 0 0.05 so in that case uh, now I, if I do a uh, you know bar plot and I can see visually see uh, which of the features of course this is already in a text form but if we put it in a bar chart it will look much better and it's easy to share it with others as well uh, so but from in a high level observation I can say that neighborhood foundation garage type MS subclass are very significant in predicting the sale price now this already came from our intuition that the location of the property is going to define the sale price the foundation of the property of course is going to this uh, you know uh, better the foundation higher will, higher will be the sale price neighborhood similar thing better the locality price might go up right same with garage type so uh, let's plot a bar chart on this one okay so you know just by using the matplotlib uh, figure we are just defining a figure size and using the bar plot module from the c1 library what i'm doing is uh, for each of the features uh, i'm plotting a the value of the p value uh, corresponding to that and let's see what it shows up okay so what we get is 
okay so because neighborhood value is uh, too low so that's why it didn't even show up whereas I can see that uh, street uh, uh, months old years old values are showing up which is a higher p value so what we can do in such cases is in order to inverse it uh, what we can do we can take the log of the inverse of this value which will basically give us uh, the inverse plot basically now neighborhood uh, bar will come up and the uh, basically the inverse of this will happen okay interesting so now depending on the p value i can say whatever we have seen previously here uh, we have just plotted the exact same thing here so we know that the first couple of uh, features here neighborhood foundation garage type and uh, so on uh, but if you see here neighborhood actually has more significance way 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 around we have seen that around 300 times more significant compared to the foundation type right and how did I say this uh, you know based on these values here you can see 225 or not 300 at least 140 or 50 times uh, more significant uh, neighborhood so with that, uh, we will uh, you know, pause for today in this particular series. Uh, in part 7, we will continue with our data analysis. Till then, have a great day and have a uh, keep practicing these concepts and it will become more and more comfortable. Have a, have a good day.